Hi guys, so welcome back to Flatwater Flat Earth. It's been a little while since I've done you guys the episode where I'm just talking to you from my from my own point of view as opposed to reading to you from a book. So today we're gonna look at the Antikythera mechanism. And this is an interesting piece because many people use the Antikythera mechanism and discuss the Antikythera mechanism as a way of showing that ancient cultures had a high level of technology and people use it as a mystery object in their top 10 lists of top 10 most amazing finds and devices etc so there's been a video on YouTube for some time uh, saying you know 3,000 year old clock uh, found underwater 3,000 year old uh, timepiece found underwater there's lots of different ways that you can describe this this piece and this uh, this mechanism, this Antikythera mechanism and device. So, why am I talking about the Antikythera mechanism? Why is it, uh, what does it have to do with Flat Earth? Well, one other amazing thing about the Antikythera mechanism is that it itself proves Earth flat being found for many years nobody could decode the gears in it and get it to work properly uh, we had I'll show you some of the photos here I have to be careful for copyright that I don't uh, play uh, some of these people's movies or it'll it'll come up as a copyright problem so I just have to show you stills but there's this gentleman and He's the one who finally cracked the Antikythera mechanism and determined how it functioned, how the gear, what the gear ratio was for it. Before this, we had lots of X-ray technicians and lots of lots of studies. People studied the Antikythera mechanism for a long time, for 30, 40, some odd years. So after they found the Antikythera mechanism, no one could properly rebuild it. We worked for a long time to properly rebuild the mechanism in the way that it was originally. So many scientists and uh, engineers and gear workers and, and mechanics and lots of people tried to, tried to piece this thing back together. And every time that they put it together, it wouldn't function properly. It wouldn't actually function in any meaningful way until this man plugged in the geocentric flat earth coordinates for the planets above when he put in the gearings using the geocentric model the Ptolemaic geocentric static plane earth ratios for the movements of the planets and the wandering stars the luminaries once he put in the coordinates of a geocentric model for Mars and the other and the other gear systems of the other planets it all fell into place and the Antikythera mechanism came to life and worked and another amazing part about the Antikythera mechanism that disassembles the argument used by many NASA fans saying that flat earth can't be real because NASA is able to predict eclipses and yet the Antikythera mechanism this ancient device using geocentric figures predicts eclipses with incredible accuracy the metonic cycle so there's much more to discuss about the Antikythera mechanism that we've left over from some other projects including Enoch and and also you know the earth the flat earth itself and how old exactly is the flat earth is 
another part of this topic, which is what turns it into such a large topic. The metonic cycle is the cycle of the luminaries, the cycle of the uh, the bodies that move above the earth that we call the wandering stars, the planets, the moon, the sun, and any other dark orbs or luminous bodies that are moving above our heads in the sky. So the metonic cycle is the cycle of those movements and how often they repeat. So there are different uh, versions of the metonic cycle and the most common uh, description we have of it is that it's a 19 year cycle. At least that that the longest portion of that cycle is 19 years, I should say. So this is a very complex topic and this is where we can get into the Hebrew calendar and the Enochian calendar and using the metonic cycle and piecing that back together, we should be able to figure out with the lunar eclipses we should be able to figure out what year it is. So this is one of those things that it ties into all of our study, all the things that we've been studying here, um, including the Russian New Earth Project where uh, they talk about the Russian teacher, the Russian uh, researcher who has affected the, what's called the Scaliger timeline. The Scaliger timeline is the one that the Vatican put together using, supposedly using a king's list, using king's lists and history, you know, all the best historical books that they have and access that they have, and then supposedly using again the metonic cycle and the eclipses. So he says, uh, I forget the guy's name, it's Le Leonid or Leninin, Lenivin, something like that. You can find him in some of my other movies on Flat Water, my first few movies about the survivors and Flat Earth, and you can also find it at New Earth and other places about the Scaliger timeline. So the Russian researcher says that that Earth is off by about a thousand years, that the Scaliger timeline is off by about a thousand years. And I would agree that we're that we're off by quite a bit. And it could easily be a thousand years. So this is something that we'll look further into. I'm looking at um, another uh, another religious organization that was affiliated with the uh, Seventh Day Adventists in the mid 1800s, and supposedly they found another version of a metonic cycle that is not just the Hebrew one. It's actually a modification of the Hebrew and supposedly according to them it's more accurate than the Hebrew version of the metonic cycle and version of the calendar so it's something that I'm gonna continue to look further into and I'm gonna have to develop uh, you know I'm gonna develop something up out of that so we'll look forward to that don't uh, don't be looking for that you know in the next few weeks or in the next few days um, as you can see, as I've been mentioning here, it's quite a large topic, so it's going to take me some time to really piece it together better. I don't want to just come out and discuss this and then not have the full detail that that it deserves and requires. So stay tuned. It, it, we will get to that. It's something that I'm looking into and keeping my thumb on, keeping my finger on at all times. So as soon as I can find more about it, I'll let you guys know. So is there anything else I want to discuss about the metonic cycle? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, in general, NASA fanboys love to use, and, and globularists love to say, Hey, Flat Earthers, uh, you guys are retarded. Flat Earth doesn't work. We know so because how come NASA can predict eclipses and you guys can't? And isn't it funny that it's actually the geocentric figures, the geocentric model that allows us to predict eclipses and not the heliocentric model. 
and it was done and it is still done to this day using these devices and using this metonic calendar based on the geocentric model so now I'm going to link the original movie uh, so that you guys can watch the original with all the detail from the actual scientist himself explaining that he needed to input the geocentric rings the geocentrics model for Mars and for the other wandering stars and that then the Antikythera mechanism magically came to life and worked and began to predict eclipses. For astronomy and calendar studies, the Metonic cycle or Ineda Coeteris is a period of very close to 19 years that is remarkable for being nearly a common multiple of the solar year and the synodic month. The Greek astronomer Meton of Athens observed that a period of 19 years is almost exactly equal to 235 synodic months and, rounded to full days, counts 6,940 days. The difference between the two periods is only a few hours, depending on the definition of the year. Considering a year to be 1 and 19 of the 6,940 day cycle gives a year length of 365 plus 1 of 4 plus 1 of 76 days, which is slightly more than 12 synodic months. To keep a 12 month lunar year in pace with the solar year, an intercalary 13th month would have to be added on seven occasions during the 19 year period. When Meton introduced the cycle around 432 BC, it was already known by Babylonian astronomers. A mechanical computation of the cycle is built into the Antikythera mechanism.